Good morning, everyone. How are you? It's Thursday morning. It's our regular Facebook Live. Thank you for being here. If you are here with us live, say hi in the comments. Let us know that everything's looking good. Um, I know that we have some guests here today. So um, welcome. If this is your first time here, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Um, this is our, just our Thursday morning regular chit-chat about books. Um, sometimes we do an interview, which we're doing today. Sometimes we do a project, which we did last week. Sometimes we talk about bookmaking tools, um, all about handmade books. So um, let me just mute that. So excellent. You can hear me and see me. Great. Nice. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Mary. Hi, Pascal. Kim. Mickey's here. Oh, Mickey's here, folks. Thank goodness. All right, so I am beyond excited today to, we have a special guest, Wendy Solganic. So Wendy and I, I will introduce Wendy in a second, but Wendy and I will be talking about um, Instagram because that is actually sort of how we connected. We've been friends now for a couple of years and we met on Instagram. We have never met in person, but we formed this friendship and we chat and um but we chat about many things, life, art, but often Instagram comes up and both, I know both of us get many questions. Um, so today we'll be chatting about Instagram amongst other things. Um, and Instagram, even if you don't wanna sell your work on Instagram, Instagram is a fantastic way to connect with others, to, uh, to be inspired and to you know find new techniques, new artists, and again, make friendships. So um, whatever your kind of perspective on Instagram, perhaps you could let us know in the comments. If you are on Instagram, let us know um, if you're on Instagram and where we can find you so that we can all start following each other too. So I see Wendy is here. Um, just to introduce my guest, she is, um, She's not from, but she has lived in Cleveland, Ohio for 20 plus years. She lives there with her extended family. Um, you know, many of you probably know her as Willa Wanders on um, Instagram. Let me just pop on the screen for you where to find her. There we go, on Instagram. Um, Wendy creates really unique fabric covered uh, journals with vintage papers, painted papers, hand lettering, stitching, machines, slow stitching. She creates these most amazing um, Willa journals, which have really become her trademark. Um, and she launched her sort of signature class earlier this year, the, uh, the Willa Journal. She is the brainchild of the Bookmaker Collective, which I know many of you have um, heard of, and we will probably be talking about that today in, in terms of um, collaborations. Um, what else is Wendy? Um, she, is, um, she has a podcast, which also started this year. This is, I think this year, I want to say this year, maybe it's 2020, but I think it's 2021. And, um, so she's a busy lady, but what you might not know actually is that Wendy had a, um, a stationary manufacturing company for like 15 years. She was a co-owner of that for 15 years. So she has lots of experience within um, the paper industry and um, the world of art. So I am very excited to bring her in. Let me, let me, where is she? Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm so thrilled to be here with everyone. I feel like I'm amongst Dude. friends, which is, you know, yeah. not the easiest thing to, to do right now. So I feel like I'm here and we're all here. Yeah. Yes, good. you are amongst friends. You definitely are amongst <laughs> friends. Um, I'm just checking. So in the comments, everyone's been posting there um, where they are on Instagram. So that's going to be really fun afterwards to go back and like check out everybody. So thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, I hope, I'm sure I didn't do your intro justice. So, um, but you know. I you think are, you totally did it justice. Really? So am I right? Am I right thinking your podcast? It just started. This year? It yeah, just started. There's 14 episodes. Are you see wow. Wow, that's amazing. So um Mickey will actually pop a link in to um your podcast in the comments because um if folks Thank want you. to check that out cuz um but yeah, so this has actually been a really big year for you. You look It's been a huge year and it, it's probably really a lot due to the fact that we had the pandemic and I was no longer doing anything really like outside of my home. So all of a sudden <laughs> Yeah, like everything changed and I was like, oh wow. I, I don't even know what I was doing before. 
I can't <laughs> remember. I think I spent a lot of time going out to the grocery store mm -hmm. and, and cooking and stuff and, and also making art. But then all of a sudden it was like, oh, you're not going to Target. You're not going to mm -hmm. Costco. You're not going to yeah. uh, Trader Joe's. And I was doing those things a lot. And, yeah. um, you know, you're not meeting a friend for coffee. Yeah. You're not going cool. to the gym to do Pilates. Like all of those things that yeah. kept me busy during the day before my kids came home from school. Because right. I, I really only have a, like a limited amount of time. Once mm -hmm. my kids get home from school, I really can... I can't really work anymore. But anyway, mm -hmm. so all of a sudden it was like, oh, I, I'm getting the groceries delivered. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, even, I'm getting Costco delivered. I'm yeah. not having coffee with my friends. And then it was like, yeah, I I had time. And when I have time, I'm going to fill it. Like, I'm uh, not, I'm not yeah. going to. Yeah, but you filled it with fun stuff. You filled it with art. You could have filled it with like, I don't know, cleaning your house or, or you know, yeah, I know no. reorganizing closets. But who wants my to do that? The whole, that all needs to be reorganized. What can uh, I think about? Like, I could, I, could I make a new class or could I reorganize closets? It's like, oh, make a new class. Make a new class. <laughs> make a new class. Oh, my gosh. It's interesting you say that, though. When you're talking about going to different um, stores and things, I swear, I used to spend, like, half my time looking around Michael's and craft stores rather than actually using up those supplies and yes. making stuff, right? Yes. I spend so much. I was going to Michael's five days a week. I have a Michael's like two miles from my house. I oh, would be like, I need much. gesso. And mm -hmm. I would go to Michael's and then I would like, and again, mm -hmm. it's, you got to drive there, park. It, it just, yeah. Yeah. Time, but time, everything has shifted now. Yeah. I found actually during the pandemic, I was using what I had because literally, I mean, yes, I could order stuff from Amazon, but you know how many boxes do you want arriving at your house um so i found i was actually using up the stuff i had which was kind of a novelty for me because i'm a you know i'm a bit of a i like to spend money on craft supplies so um i, I think that was another gift it's like oh i could just shop in my own closet so so another thing that i was doing was i was going to estate sales almost every week collecting vintage Ooh. embroidered linens and vintage lace and yeah. old sheets and all that stuff. And actually I have amassed so much stuff. I do not need any more stuff, wow. but it became almost like, I, I don't want to diss it because I had so much fun doing it. It was, right. it was like going to the estate sales, which would definitely take at least half of a day. Once oh, a yeah. week, yeah. became part of the fun of everything. And then that was gone. So again, right. it was just all of, I, I, yeah, I liked my life before. Yeah, but I had to adjust to what my new life was going to be, and that's really when the when I took my passion, which was you know yeah. creating art and art journaling and all of that, and yeah. making books. That's when it became like, oh, yeah, I could do. That's not. You know what I'm thinking? I started selling books. Yes, you did. Yeah, actually, before the pandemic. Yeah. Well, that, why don't we? Yeah. Go ahead. No, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so well. My selling books yeah. was only purely an outgrowth of following my passions. Yeah, so, so talk about that. <laughs> I definitely am led by what feels good to do, not mm -hmm. what is going to make the most money mm, or yeah. what is going to be the best business model. Like, even though what I do is kind of entrepreneurial. Yeah, yeah. It's just led by yeah. the things that I really enjoy doing. And I had made a lot of handmade books when I was in my early 20s. Mm. And then I was totally disconnected from my own art, really, mm. for the entire 15 years that I ran the social stationery company. Yeah. That's and interesting. <laughs> when I came back to my own art after I quote unquote retired. I mean, I was young and, and it wasn't like I was rich. It was just, I, I, I exited yeah. the business. Sure. And um, about a year or two after exiting, my daughter, one of my daughters was like, you know, you should, you should do this like watercolor and hand lettering. There's so much stuff going on on Instagram. This is so cool. You should start an account. And she really encouraged me and yeah. dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I just went with like, what do I want to do? What do I want to learn? And then one day I took a book making class. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden it was like, 
Huh. The the heavens opened. It was like that <laughs> oh, moment, and it was like, oh my god! You remembered. I love making books. It was yeah. actually um, this class by Kelly Wynn Conrad. Oh yeah, it yeah. was a mixed media class, and she had given it at the time as like a teaser course mm -hmm. or yeah. um, a big course that she was launching. Yeah. I forget what the name of the course was, but at the end she was like, and then you fold the papers you made and you mm -hmm. tear them and you sew them into a book. And, I was <laughs> and you're like, like <laughs> I was like, I couldn't, I, I, I held that book in my hands. Yeah. And I was just as happy as I could possibly be. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I want to make more of this. Yeah, that made that feeling that yes. or that feeling, right? I wanted that feeling. Yeah. And then and it was just literally just following. So then it was like, oh, where can I learn more about bookmaking? I found you, I found other things. And yeah. then I was like, wow, I'm gonna make a lot of books. Like this is the, the way I the way my personality is, like when I want to learn something, I yeah. go like whole hog. <laughs> and I knew I was gonna end up with a lot of books. Yeah, yeah. And that was when I was like, maybe I should start an Etsy store. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like hesitant, but actually really Kelly, Kelly when Conrad was like, yeah, it was kind of because of her. She was just like, you got to focus on what you want to do. Like she was kind of like a cheerleader and she yeah. was like, go for it. You know, if this is what you want to do, if this is what you're called to do. Yeah. And yeah. I just did it. And then there was like no stopping me. Because once I saw that people wanted handmade books, yeah. which they do. So if if mm. you're on here and you're thinking, I love making books. Is there a market for handmade books? My answer is there is a decent sized enough market for handmade books. Right. That even if you don't have a very large following on Instagram, mm -hmm. the people who do follow you is probably way more than enough mm -hmm. to sell all the handmade books that yeah. you could possibly produce as right. a single individual small time manufacturer right. of books. Well, that's interesting you say that because I bet lots of people are watching this thinking, I would really love to sell my books, but I only have, you know, three, 400 followers. And I, I agree with enough. you. I would agree that if there are three or 400 really hardcore followers that you are interacting with and you're posting regularly, I think that's enough. Yes. I really do. I, um, I just saw someone who took the Willa Journals course, Yep, has not been making art for very long, made mm -hmm. five or six beautiful quote unquote Willa Journals. Yep. Totally did everything right to engage mm -hmm. the people that followed her. I don't yeah. think she even, I think she has somewhere in the range of maybe a thousand or 1500 followers yep. and those journals sold out in minutes. So you yeah. can, it's, it's Tiffany Sharp. Yes, I know. Look <laughs> yeah. at exactly how she did it because she followed basically, she, she opened up her eyes to how other people are doing mm -hmm. the pre-sale marketing. Right. And she yeah. followed a formula that is yeah. now pretty well established of yeah. posting yeah. pictures of what you're making for weeks in advance, telling people there's a sale coming, telling people that if you want to buy the books that I'm making, mm. you know, let me know and I'll tag you when the thing goes live. The sale yeah. is happening on this day at this time. Yeah. And you will have more than enough buyers mm -hmm. for every book you are capable of producing. Yeah. If you have engaged even a relatively small number of followers, because yeah. the reality is, is that any handmade book mm. is pretty labor intensive right. and one person can only make so many of them. Right. Well, let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about, because I know a lot of people struggle with um, pricing because I mean, it's, it, there's hours, particularly if there's hand stitching or there's, you know, each page is hand painted or whatever like what are your thoughts do you, do you have strong opinions on that about i have art? a lot of i would say more like ideas about things we could talk about with pricing yeah. i don't yeah. have an opinion like this is how you should price your book what i think right. is that there are many many factors yeah and that you have to consider all of the factors 
and decide which, what things are important to you. Yeah. So yeah. of course, when it comes to pricing, mm. there's always going to be like, can I make a profit? So that's one thing to consider. Yeah. Could I possibly do this and actually yeah. um, be paid for the time that I'm spending doing it? Right. And I mean, then there's like a whole, you know, there's a whole road you could do go down thinking about that. Like, well, what did the materials cost? Right. How much do I want to be paid per hour for my labor? And right. everyone is different mm -hmm. and everyone lives in a different part of the world. That's a whole other thing. It's a That's worldwide true. market. Yeah. So if you live in Cleveland, Ohio, mm. what I need or mm. expect to be paid for my time yeah. might differ from someone who lives in San Francisco. Oof, yeah, so definitely. That in, so we're all selling to the same market. Yeah. But the cost of my labor per hour is yeah. different than someone else's. So you have to think about. Yeah, that's a good point. What do you think is fair for you to be compensated for your time? If yeah. you even care about being compensated. I think yeah. there's a whole argument that you could say, I don't even care about being compensated. And I see this out there all the time. Do you people really? Say, huh. Oh, yeah. People. If, okay. If you buy a handmade book for $40. Mm. Mm -hmm. from someone who lives in the United States of America, mm -hmm. there is no way that person is being paid anything right. close to like minimum wage, <laughs> two, three dollars an hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. But that's but a choice, the but that's their choice in Mexico. Yeah. Being paid. You may not like it, but that's what people are paid in a regular job in Mexico. Yeah. And mm. it's a different situation. Yeah. And Again, you just have to say, like, am I going to be happy yes. if I am selling a book and mm. at the end of the day, I make $7 an hour? You just have to ask yourself that. Yeah, yeah. And what your goals are. Everyone what has your different goals. goals. There are different stages of life. Maybe you just want to cover the cost of yes. new materials. That's and frankly, what I want to say. yeah, that's. If you just <laughs> want to cover the cost of the materials, then I think you yeah. should take the time to think about. Yeah. what the cost of materials really yeah. is because yeah. i think that actually we're all kind of like hoarders of art supplies oh yeah <laughs> and there's yeah. kind of a pretty large investment yeah. in amassing yeah. all of the materials that it takes to make a yeah. handmade book or journal yeah and i think that what i see out there is that i'm pretty sure people don't really understand the costs mm -hmm. yeah if they're looking to cover their costs they, yeah. people again people who just want to do it for fun and maybe yeah. they're even thinking like it just feels good to have somebody want what i made and if yeah. i get a little bit of the money back yeah for what you know for the money that i put into it i'm happy yeah. with that so yeah you have to go internal yes and, and say like what, what is, is it going to keep me happy yeah, exactly. And some people, and I mean, I think it's a really valid argument for selling them just to cover, you know, maybe a class you want to take or, you know, some new supplies that you want to buy. Like, you don't, yeah. not everyone has to be paying their mortgage. Like, you, it's your own internal goals. So I right. actually don't like talking about paying a mortgage. Yeah. I, I just do not see how it's possible to make actual mm -hmm. livable wage. No. Or mortgage type of money yep. selling handmade books. So that's mm. actually really important to, I think, distinguish. Yeah, I do um, too. Yeah, th there's a handmade book. I think I'm I'm actually like a pretty fast production employee. The only reason oh, I really this is because well, I worked. I mean, I had a production art company. Yeah, so the stationery company. We were basically producing art. Yep. In mass, and so yep. I worked a lot of hours in production. Yeah. And I know that my speed of production is actually pretty quick, <laughs> pretty relatively quick. Oh, um, yeah. But I know that it takes a really long time to mm. make one Willa journal. Yeah, yeah. And um, God, I'm like, forget why I was even bringing this up. <laughs> Paying the mortgage, oh, oh. but but frankly, you're not. You probably wouldn't pay your mortgage with Willa journals. <laughs> Hell, freaking no! I would go broke selling. I I can make one a week. Wow. Given my other responsibilities. Now, right. if I had, if I was just making Willa journals and I was doing like mm. nothing else, 
Yeah. But I locked myself in a room and I was doing nothing else. Maybe yeah. I, I could maybe make four a week. Maybe. Yeah, but but that wouldn't be much fun. It would not. It would be no, terrible. It would, I would be resent, awful. I would resent mm -hmm. that I ever did that. Yeah, That's that would be horrible. I limit myself. I say to myself, no more than one per week, so you can balance out all of the other fun mm. things that you want to do. But but this this I remember now why I brought that up. No, that so before I started the social stationery company, mm. I definitely was very down on the idea that you could make money from your crafts. Mm. I had already really entertain being a potter. So I was a production wheel potter mm. selling pottery that I made on the wheel for years and years. I and I had kind that. of <laughs> what? I did not know that. You did not I know thought, that. Okay. I thought that, I knew a lot about you. That was my <laughs> original like craft business. Yeah. And my my husband was really supportive. Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. So um but I really like, I looked at, I looked at the other people that I was making mm. pottery with and I saw what they were being compensated, like how many hours a week they were working and yeah. what their income was at the end of the year. And it was poverty level. And I mm. thought, I yeah. love making pottery, but yeah. I don't feel good if my labor is only valued at a poverty level. Right. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. So I gave up. Um, yeah. The idea of having yeah. my production pottery labor be anything that could ever provide real support. Yeah, for to your family. Myself, yeah. my husband, possible children at some point. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, then I met a woman who was hell bent mm -hmm. on starting a business with me. Yeah. And she was like, she would not take no for an answer. And she wrote basically dragged me kicking and screaming <laughs> into being in a business and we yeah. made it work this is the social stationery this is business. the social stationery business so we yeah. were making a phenomenal product yeah and it was really popular in its heyday yeah. and the so, way but, that it worked was we had to hire people to do Mm -hmm. everything. So we started out doing everything, just the two of us. Right. And then after a couple of months, we had our first employee. Yeah. And at the peak height of the whole enterprise, we yeah. had about 30 people working for us. Wow. So when you say social station, we're talking birth announcements, wedding invitations, like yes. on really, fine really fine paper. Yeah, yeah. Like, like on fine you, paper. When you lettering. walk into a fine stationery store yep. and there's rows and rows of these big, heavy catalogs full of yep. wedding invitations and holiday yep. cards, social stationery. So we were one of the companies right. who had catalogs on their shelves gotcha. and we showed at the national stationery show nice. and we sold to 350 state independent stationary dealers around the country. Wow. It doesn't sound terribly creative though for you. <laughs> well, it was creative in some ways. Yeah. Like my business partner and I shared equally the role of art direction. Oh yeah. Okay. So being an art director is really fun. Yeah. But it's and? not, doing, <laughs> it's not actually yourself yeah doing that creative yeah and i kind of but but okay so anyway my point of bringing that whole thing up was you could totally yeah if there was a really big market for handmade journals which i don't know if the market is that big right if the market were really big yeah then you could slowly just start hiring people mm. and they could make the journals Sure, that's an and option. And then you could deal, and you could deal with the human, the HR, the uh, insurance, the taxes. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the unhappy <laughs> employees, the sick days, the vacation days. No, um, you've lost me now. Service, the angry customers. <laughs> yeah. um, paying the rent. Paying, yeah. Paying the the cam fees. Which, if do you pay cam fees? No. Common area maintenance. Oh, when you no. rent space in a building, you have to pay cam <laughs> fees. So if, if that's what you want, if yeah, what you, you want is to <clears throat> make yeah. a living, yeah, then realize you are no longer. <clears throat> what? Why don't you take a drink of water, my friend? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're no longer going to be the one. Yeah, doing the creating. Sitting creative. at the table. Yeah. 
playing with paper, yeah. moving watercolor paint yeah. across a page with yeah. a beautiful paintbrush. Like yeah. you will totally lose all of that. Right. And that's fine if that's what you want. Gotcha. So, so it's a that, choice. It comes choice. back to personal choice. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. It's a personal choice. How do so, you want to spend your days? How do you want to spend your days? And what do you yeah. need? At the time, yeah. I needed to make money. Yeah. I had a young family. I yeah. needed to bring home money. We needed to pay for food and mortgage and all of those things. And yeah. I didn't have a option just to like yeah. be the artist who doesn't make money and you know maybe they sell something. I didn't have that yeah. option. Gotcha. But now I have that option. Yeah, yeah. I'm very you, grateful that I yeah. do. Very yeah. thankful that I do. I know that I am very privileged to have that option. Right. And sure. I and I have and I I get to choose yeah. how I spend my time. Nice. Well, that and that's a gift. That's a gift. So let's let's go back. Let's just let's switch gears and go back a little bit to when your daughter told you to first go on Instagram. Because <laughs> I think a lot of people have questions like, how did you get that many followers? How okay. did you get to where you are? Because I know if you're just starting out, it can be hard to get the first few hundred followers. So I haven't looked at the comments to see the questions, but I have a feeling <laughs> that that is sort of the top of people's minds. Like where, well, let's just, just start there. How did you, how have you, how do you think you've managed to amass such a um, loyal following? So I think two things happened. Like it was yep. a confluence of two different factors. Right. The first factor yeah. is wildly unfair. Okay. And not going to make anybody super happy. But I think okay. that the second factor is okay. going to maybe make people feel like they do have some sense of okay. control. So, so, because so one was being, luck. Being something that, <laughs> what? One was luck. One was luck. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, okay. So, this is what happened. I mean, I, I've told this story many times mm. on different podcast episodes. So I'm sorry okay. if you've heard it before, but I, it's important nope. in case there's yeah, people no. who haven't heard it to know this. So no, absolutely. Um, so my children grew up with two parents who were extremely entrepreneurial. They both own their own mm. business. My husband also owns his own business. So he also ah. has a factory. Oh, okay. I had a factory. Yeah. And this is what our children grew up seeing. And when yeah. my middle daughter was 10 years old, mm. her and my older daughter, who was 15 approximately, they yeah. wanted to learn how to sew on a machine. And I found a local studio and we took sewing classes. Oh, I'm nice. going to tell the story just because it's fun and it makes me Yeah. Happy. Okay. Yeah. So no, please do. We want to hear it. Yeah. We took sewing classes mm -hmm. and my middle daughter like she took to it like like almost in a supernatural like unnatural way like uh -huh. she was just like on fire with this sewing machine okay. and she was she was 10 years old and she hmm. was really into american girl dolls oh yeah i remember that time of my daughter's life <laughs> yeah yeah and so she um she said mom can i use your camera i want to take photographs of these dolls and she started an Instagram account and she had this beautiful wow. doll photography. And this was a thing like there, just like we have our art journal groups and our bookmaking groups, there's a world out there of people really into American girl dolls and taking photography of them as if they were human and okay, like that's... beautiful portraiture and wow. showing, off, showing off their outfits. So my daughter was Who knew? very into this. And she started growing her own Instagram account and she started wow. selling yeah. handmade clothes and accessories for American girl dolls. At 10 or 11 at this yes. point. Yes. Wow. Holy cow. And she used an Etsy store. Yeah. And she did that for a little while. Maybe yeah. she was a let. Yeah, you know, I think she was like 10. I think she was probably like 10 and a half. Yeah. By the time she was 11 and a half, yeah. She could see that there was this new trend emerging online. The trend yeah. was satisfying videos. Yeah. And this thing called ASMR, which is basically like hearing certain crunching noises and seeing people play with 
food or it, it's like some people get oh. like like this shiver down their spine that's asmr and my daughter like uh, she smelled somehow instinctively yeah. that people were very interested in satisfying videos and asmr and one of the ways that that people were creating this video content was by making yeah. slime okay. and taking videos of themselves playing with the slime. Because when you play with slime, you get different like sounds. And she started <laughs> making slime and playing with it and videotaping herself. And she just has a knack for yeah. cameras and editing video and all this stuff. Wow. So she starts, she starts yeah. making videos and she creates a second account and she starts posting these videos to her second account. And because she hit this, this like thing, this fad that was just emerging at the yeah. right time, her yeah. account started to grow rapidly. Mm -hmm. And she saw that and she was right. like, oh my gosh. There's yeah, a market here. Like literally at 11 years old. She's like, she, there is she, a market here. She's and an she entrepreneur. Said, she's an entrepreneur. And yeah. she said, mom, I want to sell slime. <laughs> and I was like, over my dead. <laughs> Please do not try to sell slime. Like, yeah, this is going to be a headache. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, you cannot tell this girl no. She does not take no for an answer. She never has. She never was. She, she still to this day doesn't. Don't know where she, she gets that from, but still. <laughs> <laughs> she ended up creating like kind of almost like a slime like empire. She basically became one of the most famous, popular slimers in the world, and she has an account that at yeah. its peak on Instagram had like close to nine hundred thousand followers. And we, we, we ended up becoming like, we were traveling with her to slime conventions. And she was like, people would line up hundreds <laughs> of people to meet her and get her autograph and take pictures with her. And it was like this whole thing. It died because of the pandemic. The whole thing just got, people still sell slime, but the whole industry of the, like the celebrityness of it, it all went away because of the pandemic, essentially. Because people were flying all over the world to come together to do these slime conventions, so we were driving really far, and it was it was hard because she was she was like a middle schooler. So anyway, wow. that's, like, that's like a really interesting part of the story. So she's at kind of like peak yeah. slime for her <laughs> followers on Instagram. Peak, yeah, she's like peaking with her slime, and she's like, "Mom, you should start an Instagram account." Right. For this watercolor painting that you started to do again. Because I hadn't yeah. done it for a really long time, but I, sure. I was picking it up again. And I was yeah. starting yeah. to explore hand lettering again. Yeah. And um, she's like, you should really start an account. And I was like, oh, gosh, no. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? Like, I don't need this. Yeah. And she kept haranguing me because she does not take no. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll start this account. Yeah. So I, this is actually, I think, interesting in, in just in the relation to everyone and their relationship to Instagram and all of this stuff yeah. and how to use Instagram. So yep. I was brand new. I had like zero followers. I start taking pictures yep. of what I'm lettering, like my practice lettering, my practice mm -hmm. watercolor. And um, the more I was on Instagram, the more I learned that, oh my gosh, like there's Skillshare and yeah. Creative Bug and all these other like independent teachers who have online course content. And if yeah. it wasn't for Instagram, I <laughs> never would have known that yeah. there was all this going on. And yeah. so I was like, oh my gosh, like I just started taking one yeah. course after the next. Yeah, yeah, and posting and posting. And posting and posting. <laughs> and posting. Yeah. Okay, so another big piece of that puzzle yeah. is that I had done a lot of photography. Yeah. In all of my own past professional yeah. lives. A yeah. lot. Yeah. And I had like a real nice working knowledge of what makes a decent photograph. Okay. Yeah. I feel yeah. that photography is the foundation level 
mm. of having an Instagram account that mm. other people want to engage with. Okay, so can we talk about that? Because I bet you that's also top of mind. So what would well, you say to someone? Go ahead. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there that I, yeah. had a, okay. I had a really good running start on my own Instagram sure. account. Gotcha. Because I already had a lot of photography experience and I knew gotcha. that that mattered. Yeah. So I start posting and mm. I start taking classes mm. and I'm, it's just my personality that when I take someone's class, mm. I'm going to engage with them mm. on Instagram, like in right. a, hmm. in, it's almost like, na I just am, I am naturally a marketer. It yeah. comes very natural to me. It's not painful in any way. It doesn't feel yeah. forced. Mm -hmm. So let's say like when I joined your book club, mm -hmm. like I was instantly connected to you cosmically. And that's how I well, became yeah. with all of my teachers. Mm -hmm. And I would start posting pictures of the projects that I made in all of the classes. Mm. And I would start tagging the teachers and right. I would start liking all of the teachers' posts naturally, sure. not in a forced way, but like yeah, organically. I become very yeah. invested in this relationship yeah. that in my mind was like, this is my teacher. I'm the student. I'm invested. Just yeah. like some people I see are naturally doing that with my with classes. Yeah. And yeah. then I Absolutely. become invested back with yeah. them. And I start to follow them and I like their posts and I'm I'm cheerleading them and putting their things in my stories. So mm -hmm. that's what started to happen. And yeah. my account started to grow and I was feeling good about it. I liked the way that it looked. I liked the content that I was posting and I liked that yeah. natural organic marketing and connections yeah. that were starting to develop between yeah. me and my teachers. And not only that, it would develop relationships between me and the other students in the class. And yeah. some of the people that, that I was friends with four years ago because of a Danielle Donaldson watercolor class are some of <laughs> yeah. my closest Instagram friends today. But and the, the, who I've, the yeah. key word, the key word there though, you just said was relationships. You it's built relationships. relationships. You built relationships with these and people. It was never forced. It was not mm -hmm. something that I said, Wendy, you have to go on Instagram and build these relationships. It, it, I never forced anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was it's totally from my heart. I yeah. just wanted to connect with other artists. I mm. wanted to connect about the fun that we were each individually having in yeah. our own homes, taking the same classes. Yeah. And then what happened is the really unfair thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're getting to the unfair part. <laughs> we're getting to the unfair advantage. Yeah. So my daughter, the one who told me to start the account. So I ha realized I have two daughters and one son. But yeah, <laughs> in the context of this whole thing, I'm only talking about my middle child. She's the, the she's slime, the slime girl, the slime girl. Yeah. So um, she starts to she was always pestering me to get more pets. Mm. We would already had like 30 foster cats, ton, like just <laughs> lots of animals. And she yeah. was like, I want a dog. So she's always been bothering me for a dog, but yeah. we can't get a dog. We just don't have the lifestyle for it. And mm. so she's like, okay, then I want another cat. And mm. she would just, she would pester me to no end. Mm. And one day as a joke, mm. I just said to her, if you get me 15,000 followers on Instagram, <laughs> I'll get you a new cat. Thinking that she couldn't do it. <laughs> just just thinking like, I'll get the cat yeah. and I'll get a bigger account. And the thing about yeah. it is I knew that a lot of her followers were like artsy kids themselves and that my yeah. account wouldn't necessarily be like a complete fraud. It would just be like, it's 13 yeah. year olds, you know, not necessarily 45 year olds. Yeah. So yeah. Um. anyway, she's like, okay. And she puts... A thing in her stories. So Instagram stories already existed. And she says, my wow. mom says if we can get fifteen her 15,000 followers, she'll get me a cat. Yeah. Like within two <laughs> days, I had 9,000 followers. It never got to 15. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But I got her the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what was the cat's name? That's what I want to know. The cat is Romeo. And in my, in my old photograph my old profile yes you're holding him I'm holding him when he's a kitten 
Yes, I know that picture. So that was like right after she yeah. got me all the followers. I was like, oh, I guess I should put a photo of me in my profile instead of like art in my profile. Yeah, so that's but another with, thing. But with the cat. A, with the cat. <laughs> you want to put a picture of yourself in your profile if uh -huh. you do want to sell anything. And connect with people, right? Yeah. They want to see. They want to see wanna you. They want to know what you look like. So that yeah. that's kind of like something I picked up along the way, and that's that's a really important thing. And believe me, yeah. I don't like looking at my face. I don't. I don't want to look. At me it. neither. No, but, but it's tiny on your phone. It's right, just a it's tiny, tiny circle. No one will see it. Exactly. So, so, so can we circle back a little bit to what you were saying about one of your advantages was photography? But I know yeah. for a fact. I know you use your phone, don't you? Yes, don't, you have no phone. fancy camera setup. No. So if someone was starting out, what advice would like a few tips that you would give them to okay. for their photography? I'm going to tell you right now how to do it. Yep. But there is no substitute for your own play, like okay. your own hours spent doing it. Okay. okay. Good to Here's know. Here's number one. Yep. You must use natural lighting. You okay. cannot use artificial lighting. Artificial, artificial lighting looks artificial and there's mm -hmm. no way to fix it. Okay, so in front of a window or near so a window. Pick a window in your home mm. that has light yeah. throughout the day. Now, yep. a lot of it depends upon what time of day. Mm -hmm. So when the sun is blaring in through the window, okay, that is not a time to uh -huh. take a photograph by that window. The gotcha. best times of day to take photographs photography in natural yeah. light are mm. in the morning and in the later afternoon. So okay. at, uh, after dawn and before dusk. Gotcha. But okay. not in the height Excellent. of the day. Now, okay. photographers who, mm. who, who work on shoots and they yeah. must, they must work all day long. Yeah. They, what they use is they use like they use fabrics that diffuse the light in the middle of the day. So if you wanted to, you could have like sheer curtains on your window yeah, and that gotcha. would diffuse the light so that mm -hmm. you would have more access during the day. But mm. at the end of the day, you cannot mm. use light that is creating strong shadows. You can okay. only use soft light. Another beautiful time to take photography. And it doesn't matter yeah. if you're using a camera or your phone camera. Another yeah. time is on a rainy day. So cloudiness oh. is your friend. Gotcha. What's so not, not harsh sunlight. Is blazing sunlight. Gotcha. Nice. That just that right okay. there is a great tip. Thank you. <laughs> the next. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna give you it all. So Okay, we're it. ready. Okay. We're ready. Number yep. two. Yep. Portrait mode. I don't know how, a, a, I don't know how, I only know a, an iPhone. Yep. But so I, I assume that a Google phone has portrait mode in their camera. I, I can't imagine they wouldn't. It's I probably think, even yeah. more advanced. But, I know but anyway, I use an iPhone. Do. Yeah. 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 So basically there's something yeah. called photo and there's something called portrait. Most of the time yeah. I'm using portrait mode. Sometimes I will mm -hmm. use photo. If, if I'm doing something where I'm doing a flat lay, which is when you take a picture yep. from above and you've laid yeah. everything out on your table. Sometimes yeah. I'll use portrait mode. Sometimes I'll use photo. But what mm. I, why I really prefer the portrait mode is I really prefer photos that have a focal point and then yeah. something called bokeh. I'm not even sure how you pronounce it, but mm. it's like a diffuseness yeah, yeah. of the parts yes. that are not the focal point. Yeah, and yeah a little blurriness. Where the, where, where the play really comes in is mm. for every one photo that I post on Instagram, I may yeah. take 15 or 20 photographs oh. from yeah. different angles and I'm moving around and I'm, I'm oh, interesting. Like, you know, I'm literally going like up and down and side and, and I'm moving the object and I'm, I'm literally just like in a continuous play with that object and the background and the light. Yeah, and I just take a ton of photos gotcha. and then I pick my one photo that yep. I like the best. Uh huh. And yep. I can, there's, I mean, composition. I can't get into composition. No, no, we, we don't have, we'd be but here. Composition all day. is a thing. Yeah. Um, so 
then I edit it. There's no photo that goes on my Instagram account that has zero post, post photo editing. Interesting. I, I use two different things. I, I almost always exclusively now just edit using the Instagram editing software. Mm -hmm. So okay. what's available to you on Instagram is yep. what I am using 95% of the time. They have made that editing so wonderful and so advanced. So hmm, a tip great. about the editing is yep. you don't want to overuse any of the tools. You want to keep, like, they have percentages. So brightness is the only one yeah. that I use. Like, I will use any amount of brightness I, I want to achieve the effect. But Same, contrast, yeah. saturation, highlights, and yeah. shadows, mm. and warmth. So, okay. These are the ones that I use. I'm just going to yeah. go through this slowly. Yeah. Uh, brightness. I mm -hmm. always need to adjust the brightness. My yeah. pictures always need to be made brighter because remember, I'm taking mm. the whole thing in diffuse light. Yeah. So they need to be brighter. Mm. Then just to make the picture more beautiful. Yeah. Um, I use, I set contrast to 10. Mm -hmm. Saturation to 10. Mm-hmm. Highlights to 10. Yeah. And shadows to 10. Wow. You even know the numbers. Because Impressive. that's the maximum. Once yeah. you start going over that, you're kind yeah. of blowing it. You're, you're doing too much editing. You're ruining the, the integrity yeah. of, of, of the, the file. So you got to yeah. keep, you got to keep it within a up. range. It's yeah. very subtle changes to your photo. Things that okay. maybe somebody can't really see that much yeah. but but you can tell when a photo like looks looks better yeah. from when you've taken yeah. it the Neat. last thing that is the hardest thing is something called white balance mm -hmm. yeah so that's on your on your instagram editing that's going to be called warmth oh okay yeah so i am always adjusting the warmth and what mm -hmm. i'm doing on my instagram feed although it's very difficult for me given my level of understanding and my mm. even interest in, in perfection. I'm not that interested. Like I want things to look really good, but I'm not willing to like sacrifice yeah. my life for it. No. So the white balance on the photos mm. in someone's Instagram account, when someone comes to your account and they're looking at all of your photos and you want your whole thing to look cohesive and pretty, yeah, the white balance on your photos mm. can really throw mm. a wrench into the whole kind of look and feeling. Oh, <clears throat> so yes. it's like I'm always going for a warm feeling, not too warm. Yeah, I definitely don't love it when my pictures come out looking cool. Sometimes yeah. I, I can't help it. Like, yeah, so blue I, with the blue cast, you exactly. mean cool is like slightly too blue. blue. I like yeah. it to be a little bit yellow. A little bit yellow, yeah. And I don't always get it perfectly. And sometimes it's not within my control. Like there mm. are times when I post a picture on Instagram. Mm. I don't even know it until I look at it in relation to my other photos on Instagram. Yeah. And I go, oh my gosh, that picture looks way cooler. I don't even like it anymore. It's too cool. Yeah. I want it warmer. Yeah. I will then put that post in archive. I will archive it immediately. I will just be like that, that the way that I edited that photo, you don't it like it. Look good in comparison to my other photos. Oh, interesting. I will go back and add even more warmth to the photo to try yeah. to make it a little more cohesive. But usually once a photo is like cool, oh. it's, it's kind of difficult for me to ever get it in total alignment. Yeah. And the yeah. last thing. Oh, she, you're muted. <laughs> Phone just rang. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, um, you're good. The last thing that I want to say about the, the warmth and the cool and the white balance is. Yeah. It will very much depend upon what time of day you take mm. your photograph in front of that window that it's like your window and you yeah. will see, oh, I can keep consistency with that mm. white balance a lot easier if I just stick to like between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. So gotcha. people who like, mm. there will be some people who are just like, I will just save whatever I'm working on. 
Yeah. And I will photograph it the next day at the same time. Wow. In front wow. of the same window. And wow. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but you will have a lot more consistency yeah. with that. So that was a lot. But if, you know, this is going to be available, yeah. recorded on YouTube. And if people want to go to the YouTube recording yeah. and, and take notes and, and slow mm. it down and pause it and write that stuff down. Yeah, that will be great. Um, I, so, have, I have go ahead. taught this to people. Like I have told yeah. this to people the way that I'm telling everyone who's listening. Yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't make a huge difference until you start doing it every day consistently over and over and over. So just mm. knowing the information, yeah. it doesn't mean that like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go from having like kind of crappy photos to yeah, my amazing. photos are amazing. It doesn't yeah, work practice. like that. So you've got to practice. all in the practice. But if you don't know about photo editing, like, yeah, I didn't, well, that's not true. I knew about photo editing. Yeah, you did. You had a photo. Yeah, you had a background. But yeah. I think doing it for Instagram is different. Doing it for social media, perhaps is different than perhaps what you were doing before. For it like, was different. For it magazines different. or for, you know, product photography. I was doing it for blog. I was like, I was doing, I was using a DSLR. I was photographing yeah. food for a while. Um, I was yeah. doing my editing yeah. I think on a computer I was. Yeah. And who has time for that? Really? I mean, because no. Instagram is kind of spontaneous. So I, so I, something you said, though, you kept saying consistency, consistency. So you're, you're going in your feed for a consistent look if you can. Um, but how often you post? Do you have advice for people about how often they should be posting? Or okay. is, is there a rule of a thumb? Really good question. So yeah. if your goal is to grow your account, Yep. And that's something that you really want. Mm. Then you, you, you need to post every day. Yeah. And I have definitely heard people talk about like at different points I've been, I've heard like you should not post more than once a day. I definitely heard that many years really? ago. Cause I remember it. Cause I was like, Hmm, is that really accurate? Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually what I found is that my greatest times of growth in my account. So I went from my daughter helping me get to 9,000 to growing sure. my account on my own past right. that point to now 42,000. Yeah. So my greatest times of Instagram growth were when I was posting two times a day, mm -hmm. maybe even three times a day. Yes. And why, why is that? That's because people are on all over the world at different times. And yeah. there's, I mean, there's all this complicated stuff. With well, the yeah, there's algorithm. the algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> but essentially, you're just getting more opportunities yeah. to connect with more people. I'm yeah. not saying like go on at 9 a.m. and post three photos. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying if, if you're having fun, Mm. And you've made something that you want to post and it's 9 a.m. Post yeah. it. And then if at noon you have something else that you want to post, yeah. don't hold back. Yeah. Just post, post at it. noon. And yeah. then if at five o'clock at night, you're like, I got enough. I made another thing and I want to share it with my friends on Instagram. Yeah. Don't hold back. Post Just, the third thing. Yeah. But don't, don't, I, don't, I would say don't force it. Like, I yeah. think it's so contrived when people come up with like schemes. Yeah. And the right times of day. And when all I, yeah. yeah. When I did it, it was not a scheme. It was me sharing what I was doing because I was excited to share it with my friends. Yeah. That's what you're doing. You're just sharing it with your friends. Hey, this is what I worked on this afternoon yes. and there's a shot. And then this evening, this is what I worked on. And then, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, it, I like that approach. You're I sharing that, it with your friends. <laughs> you're, I was sharing it with my friends. And again, I know that there have been artists who make like mm -hmm. a really big concerted effort to grow their Instagram account by using whatever like principles mm. or like, yeah. I need to post at this time and I need to post yeah. this much and I need to do this, that and the other thing. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't help or work, but it, it felt too much for me. Like I, I'm yeah. not, I'm not in it to 
I'm not in it to win it. I'm just yeah. in it to have fun. Have fun. Yes, to have fun and make stuff. <laughs> yeah. So That's, it's like, yeah. if I'm having fun and mm. I have a day where I make a lot of things, then I post many a times. Yeah. But you know what? Mm. Recently, you know, just I got shit going on with my dying mom and... I've got all these yeah. people visiting and there's stuff going on in the world that's affecting me. It's like, yeah. I don't, I'm not feeling like posting so much. I'm so you don't. So yeah. I don't, I'm not yeah. like, Oh gosh, I gotta yeah. get that post in or my account won't grow. It's like, okay, so my account's not going to grow right now. Like that's I gotta just focus on other stuff. Yeah. It's a season. And if it's, it's not season. fun or you don't have time, then yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's so. I do have a. I do. Can I ask you a fun question? Sure. Um, someone was asking why Willa wanders. <laughs> Where did that come from? Where is did that it come from? Yeah. So, uh, this is funny. I've never been like super connected with the name Wendy. Like, I I didn't like it or dislike it, but it just yeah. It's like it's you know. I just think of it like it's an okay name. I'm again. I wouldn't like make an effort to go like legally change it. But anyway, you don't love um, it. I don't love it. I was yeah. named after my father's father. His name was William in America. Oh. His name was William. His that yes. wasn't even his real name. His real name was Velvo. Oh, by me. Okay, <laughs> from the Ukraine. Yeah. So anyway, so he came to America. He changed his name to William. That's what everyone called him, Willie. When I was yeah. a little kid, my mother was like, "Oh, when we named you, we considered naming you Willa." I don't know. She just told me like. We really? thought of this name and that name. And yeah. I never forgot that she said we considered naming you Willa. Yeah. And I just thought, oh my gosh, is that way cooler than my name? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty cool name. And then when I started the Instagram account, um, yeah. I had gone through many different names, actually. Yeah. So that's not the first name of this account. I don't, oh. I had some really shitty names, like, yeah. <laughs> Lo loves letters my kids will never let me forget how bad these names were i think <laughs> the name of the account when i started it was something insane like loves letters flowers and bujos which is bullet journals oh yeah and my kids were like mom that <laughs> name is way too long and so i was like oh okay i'll change it and like you know after, well, you after a couple it. months yeah. and i changed it and what happened was I think I changed that name yeah. three times before I settled on huh. what I really liked. And so Willa is the name that I wish my parents had named me, gotcha. that I feel like I have a legitimate claim because my grandfather, who I was named after, was named William. Yeah. And then Wanders actually comes from Wendy. So the, if you look in a name book about what, is, yeah. what does your name mean, the name yeah. Wendy actually means wanderer. Ah. And I noticed about myself throughout my whole life that I am a wanderer. Yeah. I wander from idea to idea. I wander mm -hmm. from... Like I was a potter and then I was in printing and now I make yeah. books and I, yeah. at times I've been an avid knitter and, and, and I'm okay with that. I like that about myself. I'm not yeah. embarrassed that I like, it's not like, oh my God, I was a potter when I was 20. So I should be a potter when I die. Like, right. no, it's yeah. okay to evolve and try yeah. new things. So oh, I love great. that idea that uh -huh. I get to wander through my whole life creatively from place to place. Oh, that's fantastic. I so love that's that. Willa Wanders. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so I just can we just touch on one more thing before you know we wrap up? And that it's it's come back to something that we said at the beginning, which is uh, well, it's come up a lot. Relationships, sharing with your friends on Instagram. Like, how have you felt? about collaborations on Instagram because I know you know you started the bookmaking the bookmaker collective this year this was your that was your brainchild and I know you've had other collaborations um what would you say to someone just starting out who you know is kind of looking for that or what is the benefits of, of those kind of things so well, the reason I started collaborating with other people is actually mm. that I saw that other people were collaborating yeah and I felt like I had some kind of like fear of missing out. I had some collaboration FOMO. Oh. And I was like, 
why isn't anyone asking me to collaborate? Like, I would totally love to collaborate. Yeah. And then I was just like, you know what, Wendy, Willa? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah. You. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah. If you can you do that. If you want to collaborate, mm -hmm. you have to make it happen for you. You can't just sit back and watch other people collaborating and doing the things that you are drawn to. You yeah. got to make it happen for you. And then good for you. I just kind of opened up to that idea that I was going to have to put in the labor uh -huh. and the work and the universe downloaded kind of a bit, I think a big, you know, a big hairy idea to yeah. be the bookmaker collective. And then I went yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, but as far as the benefits go, I mean, definitely. I think that human beings are, yeah tribal and people mm. want to feel like they're part of something mm -hmm. and yeah. i think that that has pros and cons mm -hmm. the con is that some people feel excluded like i had been feeling like why don't they ask uh, me to collaborate there's an yeah. element of it that's kind of negative like yeah. It makes some people feel left out. And yeah. then there's that element for the people who are involved of, yeah. I have friends, I have a community, yeah. we have a common goal, we're working towards something that is mutually beneficial. Like yeah. most of these collaborations exist mm. as marketing collaborations. Right. It's like, let's come together on a project Yeah. and I will expose my followers to you and you will expose your followers to me and yeah. maybe there's some people are not going to like the sure. new exposure they're just like oh i that's... like you know i like artist a but i'm not interested in artist b yeah and that's totally fine but yeah. then there'll be a small number of people who are like oh i never heard of willow wanders yeah and they cross over that's totally new to me yeah so that's why people mm. love collaborations because yeah who doesn't want to grow their exposure yeah. on Instagram? Yeah. Even before yeah. I started making any money, either selling mm. books or mm. uh, or selling online courses, even before yeah. that, yeah, I just enjoyed connecting mm. with more and more people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. For the just literally no money in it, just... Yeah. I really enjoyed the connections I was making. And yeah. so that's what collaborations are. So mm. there are certain collaborations that yeah. are businesses that are run by one person or a group. And then they bring like Wanderlust or yes. Art is Magic. There's a lot yeah. of them. There's there's Lifebook. There's one. Yes, that tons. I, I don't, there's tons. Yeah. And those are collaborations. And with those, if you're interested in being in a collaboration like that, yeah, um, you reach out to that organization and you find out what is their application process. Right. Yeah. You just and ask. Then, and sometimes people come to you and they ask you, would yeah. you like to do this? So yeah. um, that's another way to collaborate. Mm. Um, for sure, mm. as an individual artist, you yeah. are way more interested to other possible collaborators if you've built the foundation of having mm. good photography, a good Instagram account. I don't even yeah. think you have to have a ton of followers, yeah. but you have to kind of prove yourself that you are invested yeah. in <laughs> marketing yourself and your willingness to market other people. So, I mean, that's oh, a whole yeah. other thing of yeah. who is willing to do yeah. cooperative marketing. Some people just, it's not their nature for whatever reason yeah, to want to engage in the world where they're sharing yeah. the limelight, where they're sharing, you know, where mm -hmm. I'm saying, well, I have this account, but I'm going to expose like with the bookmaker collective for whatever reason. Yeah. I just really like marketing everybody. I don't have yeah. to even just market me. I yeah. just want to market. So I do. Yeah, I, I created do too. <laughs> this thing where it was like, yeah. oh, I'm going to market the crap out of five other artists. Like right. I'm going to spend a year yeah. marketing. Yeah. Not every day, but like yeah. a yeah. lot of my time is like, how yeah. can I gain, mm -hmm. expo you know, gain 
exposure for them and help them yeah. make more money. And I just but, think it's but wouldn't, fun. But wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, though, it is marketing and we are growing our following, but also I feel like the relationships within the collab you know within the artists who are collaborating Absolutely. for me for me that has been like one of the most valuable things just going back and forth sharing ideas sharing experiences like oh that's the same for you like that to me is pretty invaluable huge that has yeah. been invaluable yeah i think people so would get a lot from that too, you know, if they yes, would, absolutely. would do collaborations. So, yeah. so even if even if you ended up forming a group where people have very small Instagram followings and they're really relatively new, if you make yeah. some type of collaboration and you're coming together and having meetings about this yeah. collaboration that you're doing, things are going to yeah. start to grow and people are going to share yeah. ideas with each other and people are going to yeah. gain knowledge of how did they do something and let me share this with you and it's yeah. invaluable you can't yeah. not do that without collaboration with other people yeah. it's just it's, it's too pretty hard. priceless yeah it's priceless yeah yeah it really so is that level it's wonderful i think that for the people who are the participants in the bookmaker collective it's yeah. a way to engage with other people at a closer level. So it's, it's, you know, there's one level when you're like leaving comments on someone's Instagram account. It's mm -hmm. a whole nother level when you're like a mm. VIP in the collective and you're on Zoom calls and yeah. we see your faces and we're hearing your stories and we're sharing our stories. It's just, yeah. it's a whole nother so level. You, so you're talking about the students. So the students who yeah, are- Yeah, the part who participants. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, the, I don't feel like people are necessarily teachers or students. I feel like- part of the collective. Like, yeah, it's more like you're a artist teacher and you're yeah. a participant. And the participants yeah. in their own right are artists yeah. and teachers. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good way of looking it's, at it. It's just like, yeah. who happens to be- Mm. The six people in 2021 that yeah. are the hosts of a weekend workshop. But yeah. next year, it might be totally different people hosting yeah. those six workshops. Yeah, I and think it will. It's, yeah. it's a collective. Yeah, that's a really you you birthed an amazing thing. And so talking of let's just let's just do bring this around to your class is next on the um, Bookmaker Collective Roundup, and you're doing a little Willa. So I've had a question a couple of times come up in the comment, actually, what is a Willa journal? Because okay. not ev not everybody knows what a Willa journal is. So maybe okay. you could show us one and what a, <laughs> and what a little Willa journal is. <laughs> so. Okay. I want to talk about that and I want to talk about these crazy names. So okay. when I came into the space where people were making and selling books, yeah. People already had like staked claims in certain names for things, started putting things like registered trademark on certain names. Okay. And Interesting. Um, that's actually why I started calling my journals Willa journals because I was like, well, yeah. if I can't like feel comfortable as yeah. a newer, I was a newer person coming into this space yeah. <clears throat> I have to put like a weird name on it. Like I can't yeah. call it, I can't call it a something journal because that's yeah. what someone been else taken. is calling gotcha. it. And, and yeah. they're like, they think they own that thing. And, and if gotcha. I make that thing and I put- There's a conflict, yeah. Yeah, and, and I was just, so here's another, I don't know if you know this about me. Here's another thing. I have a law degree. I went to law school. I never practiced. I never took I the did. bar. Wow. But actually, intellectual property was one of my, like, fa I only liked two classes. I liked tax and intellectual property. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> copyrights, <laughs> patents, you know, yeah. trademarks and all that stuff. Yeah. It, I wasn't, like, new to the, line of thinking. the concepts and the feeling that are involved in yeah. creation and ownership and all of this stuff. So anyway... I yeah. needed to lead up to why I would put such a weird name on my journals. I, well, it's I not weird, to, but anyway, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I started calling them Willa journals because I needed to yeah. establish that what I was doing was different. Was something that was a little bit different. I'm not yeah. gonna. 
I'm not going to go out on some kind of high horse and be like, I invented junk journaling or I invented patchwork covers. I didn't. Other people were doing it long before I was. Yeah. Where I feel like I added something unique to it. Yeah. Was the way that it's constructed, which I don't know of anyone else constructing junk journals the way that I construct them that I'm aware of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I made a new construction and I also did something that trans it, it it's part of my philosophy of art is I'm making art for fun. Yeah. But is there a usefulness to it? Like, is there a next life? Mm-hmm. I really struggled for a long time with mm-hmm. having piles and piles of watercolor paintings. Mm and doodles and things. Mm. And what was I doing with this? I did not want to be someone who sold art in a gallery. I did Mm. not want to try to compete in Mm. the online marketplace of Instagram with the number of people that were making beautiful watercolor paintings. Even though my paintings were amazing, like I'll say that they were really good, but that market was oversaturated already before I got there. Right. But I wanted desperately to have fun and keep painting and keep doing what I love to do. Yeah. And when I mentioned that I took that bookmaking course and yeah. it opened up my eyes to the transformation yeah. of art from one level to the next level. Yeah. And that's what I felt like. Again, have people done this before? I have no idea. Maybe they did. But for Mm. me, it was like, oh, I want to bring the paintings and the drawings that I want to do for fun into a junk journal. And yeah, that was kind of and then I started like Mm. um, just choosing what papers I was going to put in my journals. Yeah. Doing all of that hunting down of vintage yeah. wallpaper and ledger paper. And again, I'm not the first person to do it. Sure. But but those are the wallpapers that I chose. Yes. Yes. Those are the ledger pages that I hunted down. Yeah. Yeah, that was what I, makes it Willow unique. Journals course. Mm. Yes, my Willow Journals course, we talk a lot in the beginning about collecting mm. and storage of mm. the things that speak to you. And yeah. so really anyone could make a Willa journal and call yeah. it a Tiffany journal. Yeah. Because yeah. those are the things that Tiffany collected. Those and are that the spoke things to her. That yeah. spoke to her. Those are the color yeah. combinations that spoke to her. I yes. have an obsession with vintage linens from the 70s. I love that flower power vibe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the more I can weave those in, I love anything from India. I love the colors and the patterns and the textures of the fabrics that come from India. So I've collected a lot Mm. of stuff from India. Mm. And that's Mm. what makes a journal a Willa journal. It's my passion in Mm. that journal. It's the paint. It's the watercolor florals that I love to paint that go yeah. into those pages. So anyone can make a Willa journal and make it mm. their own thing. And can we, this can is, we see, this yeah, can we see Willa, one? Yes, so <laughs> we want to like, see it. This is like your typical Willa journal. So again, did I invent a strap on a journal? Hell no. Did I invent no. a button on a journal? Hell no. Did I invent patchwork on a journal? Hell no. But I took yeah. different things that different people were doing and I combined yeah. them into something and this is the one that I use when I want to use a journal of this size. Wait, yep. It's, what size is it? It looks to be like this is nine six by nine. Yeah, this six is by six nine, by yeah. nine. The reason yep. I love six by nine is because a lot of commercial paper is cut to nine by 12. By 12. And yeah. You can easily <laughs> fold it. And that mm-hmm. makes your life so much easier. Um, mm. But like this. Pa- okay. So oh, yeah. I use a lot of fabric as. Um, Pages, the, not pages, but the the uh, signature wraps. Oh yeah, so yeah. I love to have fabric. I love all that threadiness, and then oh, yeah. it's uh, so 
these were some of the original watercolor paintings when I was nice. just coming back. Why am I having so much trouble? Yeah, right when there. That's it. That's perfect. In, and that's how that's how it developed. And then this is new stuff that I painted yeah. onto the pages. So Ooh, it's like, nice. So it's basically, it's an art journal. You can art journal in it. Yeah, it's an you art can, junk journal. It's a yeah, it's an art junk journal. It's, I, you know, I make all the tea stain papers and the, and the oh, eco nice. papers. You can sew pockets in. Nice. Um, you know, again, all the collected stuff, the vintage ledger papers. Oh Whatever my gosh. I feel like doing like, um, oh, you know what I had done a ton of? Yeah. I love swatching, which oh, everyone yeah. loves. Everyone loves swatching. I could swatch all day, every day. It's like, <laughs> what am I going to do with all these, you know, Watch it. pages of watercolor swatches I had? Well, yeah. guess what? Cut yeah. it up, fold it up, put yeah. it in your book. Yeah. And then that's a page. You don't even have to do anything to it. And then yeah. your next page, which, yeah. which is blank. Then I came in one day and I was like, I want to make a face. Yeah. And it's like, it just becomes this incredible work of art. So when I mm. make a Willow journal for someone else, mm. it's, there's a little bit of my swatching. There's a little bit of my watercolor painting. There's mm. the, all the vintage papers I've collected, music yeah. sheets, ledger paper, wallpaper, all that stuff woven in with pristine, yeah. brand new, Mixed yeah. media paper, wa cold press watercolor paper, hot mm. press watercolor paper. It's yeah. all woven together. Sulfite uh, paper, um, yeah. card stocks. I use black card stock and craft card stock. So there's lots of room, lots yeah. of room for yeah. you know writing. Wow. I use I use like ruled paper, so I'll put bullet mm. paper in there and line paper. So there's yeah. all these different opportunities. Wow. In a Willa so, journal. So that's a Willa journal. Now, <laughs> I made a grave error. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. What did you do? <laughs> I called the other journal a Lil Willa. Yeah. That was not smart. Why? Because people are confused. They oh. think that in the Lil Willa class, yeah. that, that somehow it has any relationship to the... Oh, oh it doesn't? It doesn't. There's oh. nothing about the Lil Willa class. Oh, can that, you show me then? What's the little Willa? Because yes. so I'm going to be taking this. <laughs> this is a Lil Willa. And okay. again, the reason I call it a Lil Willa is the other name is trademarked. Oh, gotcha. I would be calling it a something else. Yeah, well, don't tell us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so to me, a Lil Willa is any small journal. Oh, it's a small journal. Gotcha. <clears throat> but it's not just that. Um, mm. It's basically a series of mixed media explorations okay. that play out yep. before you turn the book into a journal. Gotcha. So by the time you make the cover and construct the journal, yep. there, your pages are going to be what I call, I think probably other people call this too, jumpstart pages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> In the in the in the way that I'm using that, mm. you are your own jumpstart. So you're not you're not buying mm. someone else's journal and mm. putting your art into it. Which I think they sell things. There may be stuff like that on the I, market. I think there is. Yeah, yeah, I the, think there is. Yeah. The way I'm using that idea is you're going to make your own mixed yeah. media sheets. Yep. Using a lot of fun, fun, entertaining processes. Right. Then we're gonna fold, cut and fold all of that paper into and make it into a beautiful journal. But you don't have to make this small. If you want to make yours five by five, if you want to gotcha. make it five by oh. seven, then oh, you're gonna be able to do whatever size you want. The point of it is that it's gonna be your jumpstart journal. So what will happen is yeah. when you have 15 minutes or 20 minutes and yeah. you feel like you've got some emotion that you want to express on the page, yep. you can pull out your mm -hmm. little Willa yeah. and you oh. already have so much going like on a page. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about how I take it. Let me find something that has it. Like I'm going to talk about how I take the mess that yep. is the jumpstart yep. into developing it further into Okay. Uh, something that's finished. Yeah. Like like this. 
Gotcha. So we're gonna gotcha. we're gonna be taking those jumpstart pages and creating like, and yeah. creating. So you will end up with a journal that can be like mm. just something that whenever you feel like it, you just you can come in. Yeah. And you can play around. Huh. I love have, that idea. Like, yeah. You can doodle in it. You can write quotes in it. Mm. It's just. It's yours. It's It'll yours. Be your, so yeah. I call it a, a little willow only because I don't, I don't know what else to say. Well, I love it. Can we have one, a couple questions before we finish? Um, uh, so actually Rhonda just asked what class this is. We, we, we've put, a, we'll put a link in for you, Rhonda. Um, the binding. So I just want to say that's the bookmaker, the bookmaker collective. collective. Yes. The access to that is through a work of heart.com. So exactly. Andrea, who owns a work of heart in San Jose, California, is doing all the administrative work yeah. for our classes. For, for all of our classes. And yeah. she is the one who owns a retail store and she builds all the kits that yes. are for sale. And you don't mm. have to have a kit. There's a supply nope. list. You can get the supplies on your own. You, you most you likely them. have most of them. <laughs> yep. But if you want to buy a kit, the kits are, are selling out. I mean, their people yeah. are wildly happy with the kits. Yes, the kits are great. Um, so the binding, this is your, you don't need, it's your own style of binding, right? Which is specific to the Willa journal and it's going to be specific to the uh, little Willa, right? So, so the binding is mm. not any different than the binding that we did in Ali, your class, the binding that we did in Kristen's class. It's not oh. like, oh, I have some kind of magical stitch that I'm teaching. Oh, I'm so it's just a long stitch or a pamphlet stitch, exactly, whatever stitch. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I mean, gotcha. if you want to use one yeah. that has the X's, yeah. you gotcha. can do that. If, yeah. if you want to go whole hog and pull out one of Alan, what's his name, Alan? What's the guy Keith who wrote Smith. the book? Keith, Keith Smith, Smith, yeah. If you yeah. want to pull out a Keith Smith book. And do a really complicated crazy, thing, yeah. That's up to you. But yeah. The work and the excitement of what is in mind is really a lot of mixed media art. So yes, if, what's inside. if you're a bookmaker <laughs> yeah. and you are interested in how mm. can you incorporate mixed media or you just want to have more mixed media exploration, yeah. this is really a great workshop for that. And mm. we're going to be, um, we're going to be talking all about like personalizing covers. Oh, nice. And different things that you can do. So yeah. it's, um, can you remind me the dates? June 10th? 10, 27 and 28 Great. are Thank when you. we will be actually filming with mm -hmm. all the collective. And doing it live. Yeah. And doing it live. Yeah. After that, like a couple days later, if you miss it or you miss the end of it or part of it, it everyone who signs up is going to have access to all of the video, like all eight hours yeah. of it. Yeah. Within Great. a few days. Perfect. Thank you. Wow. Okay. I knew we'd talk for a really long time because we always do. <laughs> we never have I'm a big conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in the description for this, we have included links to the Bookmaker Collective class. We've included links to the Willard Journal uh, class and all your other online classes and your podcast. People should listen to your podcast. Um, but essentially, we um, the best place right to connect with you is probably on Instagram, I would say, right? So Instagram for sure at willa.wanders. Yep. And if you do happen to like what I'm doing, like yep. sign up for my newsletter. So yes. in the bio on Instagram, it's mm -hmm. like, here's the link to my website. You easily yep. access the sign up for the newsletter. And that's yep. where you get informed of here's a class I'm giving. Here's, here's a talk Allie and I are doing. You know, yeah. I, I don't send email just to send email if i mm -hmm. send you an email i actually have something i do Think to tell you want to tell you like nice an opportunity and you know maybe you don't want to take that class but that's where that's it's where the best the place to stay in touch places yeah. yeah excellent and i'm getting a new website which i'm so yes. excited which is gonna launch like any day now and oh, that's just fantastic. Willowwanders.com. Right now, I don't nice. have willowwanders.com. Nice. I have, I have willowwanders.carrd.co. Anyway. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's confusing. Oh yeah. But, I'm, but, but my website is being built. It's going to be gorgeous nice. and amazing. And you'll be able to access nice. everything all in one place. So it'll be like Perfect. all the podcast episodes, all the classes, oh, all that'll the information. Be great. It'll all be in one place. Yeah. Good for you. That's With a big undertaking.
I hired an amazing, amazing oh, did you? website developer. I could oh, never good. do that on my own. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, good. Good for you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm going to let you get on with your day. Thank you for being here. We could just do this like every single week, right? <laughs> we <laughs> talked always... about it. <laughs> There's many things because honestly, I like have a whole list. I'm like, oh, I could talk about that. Oh, I could ask her about that. But we'll just do this another day. Yeah. So thank, thank you for you being so here. Much. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, it's for been really fun. And um, okay, I'll see you soon. I'll see you in the class. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. Bye.